to get this program to where it is right now, where it's not like, hey, every three or four years we might have a breakout season, but that consistency of being in the conversation, you know, fighting for a conference championship every single year, how satisfying is it knowing the work that you and the other coaches have put forth to get this program at this level? Well, I mean, it's been uh, over the six years now that we're in our seventh. It's been an incredible ride, winning back-to-back championships, winning another one in 2012. But the biggest thing has just been the resiliency and the uh, determination of the players. They've really taken on the head coach's personality. They're, they believe they're the toughest team on the field. They play physical. We still believe kind of all kinds of football. And when you start getting that kind of ingrained in them from the top down where the players kind of control that and run that and make sure everybody's on the same page and the coaches don't have to do it all the time, that's when you feel you're really moving in the right direction. Coach, I didn't know. I don't know if this was a worry in the preseason before you guys started playing games, but the fact, that, and I was just telling Steve, the fact that, especially with the older guys on the team, the senior leadership, that they've been able to impress upon everybody. Last year was last year. This year is this year. To me, that's remarkable, and that's some that's some remarkable leadership coming out of your football team. You see it the same way? Yeah, without a doubt. And I you really saw it when we saw it back in January that. We were a new group. I mean, it was, you know, obviously exciting last year, you know, winning the championship, winning the bowl game over Houston. But, you know, then it was a new group. And I think they had a little chip on their shoulder. We lost some obviously very good football players. I think there's like five or six in the NFL right now. And and I think they, they put that kind of out there that, you know, the team in the season is not going to be as good. And, and that really motivated them through the off season, the summer, and, you know, in the fall camp and now into the season that, that they, too, think they can be a special group and, and you know, worked hard to get that way. All right, Coach, you've been handling the running backs for years and obviously offensive coordinator for the last few. You've had some good running backs. Donnell Pumphrey obviously finishing his career as the all-time career leader yards in the NCAA history. And now Rashad Penny, a senior who's been there, had over 1,000 yards rushing a year ago. We knew how good he was here in San Diego. But when I look at national Heisman polls right now and he's in the top three and I have a Heisman vote, so you know where he is in my <laughs> list right now. Let's just talk about this kid. We interviewed him early. Uh, he impressed us 100%, but his patience, he could have gone to the NFL before this year. Talk about not just the yards that he's piling up, but how his performance has had an effect on the rest of the team. Well, first of all, he's an incredible young man. He's really been small on his feet. He works hard. Never see him down. He's always you know, good with all the other players, a big part of them, great personality, and, uh, you know, it starts there, great work ethic. And I think just, you know, in, in my mind, really, even though people said he wasn't a starter last year, to me, he really was. Humphrey was like 1A, he was 1B. You don't run for 1,000 yards being a, being a backup. And we used him in so many different ways, you know, to get the ball in his hands and obviously with his uh, kick returning, you know, prowess that, that uh, you know, we knew he could be a big weapon and he got his opportunity to be the, be the main back and uh you know he's, he's taking that thing he prepared for it through the off season and summer he worked it seemed like even harder and, and took care of himself really trained his body hard that way and, and it's paying off for him now okay coach you may not be able to use the same language you probably used on saturday but <laughs> when you saw the weather and how that game was starting what was going through your mind against the falcons well, that first quarter over here is going to be a long night. So it might be better to, to drown or be water. It felt like you were getting waterboarded anyway. <laughs> I don't know how those guys feel. <laughs> so maybe they just go ahead and end it. But, uh, you know, that's, we needed something like that. You know, and the lightning, thank God, the, the lightning hit and gave us a little break to regroup. And I think it's a great wake up call to the kids because we talked to them about you can't get comfortable. When you get comfortable, you stop growing, you stop improving you just kind of take the edge off a little bit and we got to stay on edge and you know kids are kids and everybody's telling them how great they are and uh, you know it's human nature to start believing it and you know that was a fantastic wake up call hopefully now we fought through that and still find a way to to win the game i thought that was a real testament to them coming back because what well, air force has won 18 out of the last 19 home games beating two top 25 teams and they're a tough team to beat anyway and especially at home and thought our kids showed tremendous character coming back from that. Hopefully we learned a, a valuable lesson. Coach, we talk about a lot what could be with this season, and we are not getting ahead of it. It is one week at a time, cliche or not. But 
this team's ability to emotionally get ready every single week. I mean, to go to Tempe, the game at home against Stanford, go into Colorado Springs and, and find three ways to win games uh, says a lot about this team right now. But as we move forward in the schedule, with these 19, 20, 21-year-old kids that you've been working with all these years, how do you keep the emotional levels up so you don't have that week where you have that big letdown? Yeah. Well, I make my livelihood on 18, 19, 20, <laughs> and 21-year-old kids, and that's when I look for God. That's what I was to my wife. <laughs> Crap. You know, having to deal with them all the time. Uh, no, it's, uh, you know, it's an ongoing process. Uh, you continually try to pound it in them. Like most kids, probably when I was their age, I'm like, you know, what does this old guy know? He doesn't know anything. And, <laughs> and you know, you start believing what you want to believe. And uh, kids are like that. I was like that when I was a kid. And uh, But we just continue to try to put it out there in front of them that we could probably just show up and, and we'll be good. You know, we probably win a lot of games still if we just show up. But if you really want to be great, and we got a chance to be great, because we really haven't played a complete football game yet. We haven't on offense. I know Coach Williams said on defense they haven't. We really haven't put a total game together where you're sitting there at 4-0 now and you're beating some good teams saying, well, how's that possible? But we got, we got so many areas to improve in, and that's what we're trying to drive home with the kids, that there's still you know, so much better that we can do and improve on. And, and uh, you know, hopefully they you know, start absorbing that a little bit and, and work at it. And uh, always, every Saturday will tell, but it's you know it's an ongoing process. I know you're not going to tell us what the game plan is for Saturday, but if you can, from what you've seen on tape so far, what's this Northern Illinois defense like? You know what? They're really athletic. So I thought this week we'd come out and just get an empty package and throw it like 80 times and really shake shake the world up. You know, run it like five times and throw it like 80. <laughs> so I threw it all over the yard. Now they're – we met from last year, and they got so many good players back. They're very, very athletic. They're built kind of for a spread team, just what they see a lot in the MAC. So we got to be able to lean on them, pound on them, keep our because they really, really can run around and, and make plays. they got great team speed. They, they don't blitz a lot, not like Air Force, but they're, they're so athletic that you got to get out on them and cover them up because they can dodge you and run around you and different things. So we'll have our hands from them. We jumped out to an early lead last year, and then it was nip and tuck after that. So... Uh, we're going to have to really try to try to pound on them like we do. You know, the better we run the ball, the better we play action pass. And that's what helped us, obviously, a week ago. We were able to get some good play action passes up and really helped us all year. And, and we got to continue to do that because that's the way we're built. But I'm looking at four quarter game. Like, you know, a team that went into Nebraska, you know, 100,000 were really old back there. And, I mean, they physically whipped them. I know they returned two, touch, two interceptions for touchdowns, but Nebraska really didn't do much the whole day. So we know we got our hands full. There's no doubt about that. Coach, final thing, you know, you've been here since the get-go with Rocky Long and seen this program build, but with the Chargers gone, do you, do you sense a difference? We certainly do, but do you sense a difference in how the Aztecs are resonating right now with the city of San Diego? I really think so. I mean, I hear it, you know, when I'm out and about and around. I live downtown. You know, my wife and I, we hear it a lot. We're talking to people. And, uh, you know, is that obviously the two home games, two great attendances. I think this is really a big week. You know, you're playing, you know, we all know New Orleans. I mean, a few years ago, they were in the Orange Bowl, but a lot of people on the outside will look back and say, you know, you know Illinois. So I think a real testament will be how many people come out Saturday night to watch the game. Is it going to fall back to 20,000 or is it going to, you know, keep hovering out there, you know, 35, 40,000? So I, we're really interested to see that. Hopefully the people will respond to what's going on. The only thing we can control is, you know, just playing the win. Who's ever there is there. But, uh, you know, I think this week could be a big telltale, telltale sign on that, on uh, how people are really into it.